what's up everybody welcome back to pens and tea my name is carrie and today we have to give a big thank you to narwhal for giving us this pen uh this is their new uh finish in a line that's been out since about 2020 and it is their narwhal school kill dragonette sapphire and it has a fine nib Dragonette Sapphire is their latest finish, which is the design. Um, there are a couple others you can choose from. The uh, Shulkill is the model name, which I know I'm kind of butchering. Uh, it does have um, roots in Dutch. So if you actually go check out a video that SBRE Brown did a long time ago, uh, he goes over the like Americanized pronunciation and the actual pronunciation. I will not butcher that right now. So... <laughs> Um, but yeah, the Dragonette is the latest one. This is the box that it came in. Uh, nice and small, nothing too fancy, which I appreciate. Um, I would rather have basically next to garbage looking packaging um, so that we pay for as little as this as possible and as much as this. Uh, so it has their narwhal design, narwhal label on both sides, and then it just kind of pulls out from here. You get the user manual. It's housed in here inside its little packaging. Uh, and then you get a wrench uh, to take it apart. Um, so that's pretty cool. This is a piston fill fountain pen. So we're just gonna shove this back and get it out of the way. So this is the new pen. I have never used this specific pen before, uh, this model before, um, but I have used a couple narwhals in the past. Um, so do check out other videos um, if you wanna see different models. Um, but they reached out to me and they asked me if I wanted to take a look at this. I said, absolutely. Uh, and man oh man, am I glad I did. Because while it doesn't look this way uh, very much on camera, you can see a little bit of it. The material is really, really sick. It's got really awesome chatoyance to it um, and pretty good depth. Uh, the resin that this is made out of um, is uh, proprietary to Narwhal. Um, it's not seen in any other pen, uh, which is really cool. Um, this specific model, like I said, this finish is brand new, but this model has been around since 2020. It came out at the Philadelphia Pen Show. Um, so the, the model itself is not super, super old, um, but I do quite like it. So let's go over it. Um, top of the cap, you just get this little uh, rose gold gold finish. Uh, and you can see me, hello. Uh, and then you get a rose gold clip, uh, which looks like it should be able to be pressed, but it can't. Um, so it's just a traditional, it's pretty tight, but it would definitely do the job. Uh, you've got a really cool design here that does say narwhal kind of hard to show on camera but and then it says narwhal again but it's so subtle um, I really like that uh, you have a little ink window here uh, to tell you if you have your ink or not um, this obviously is showing with the cap closed uh, so you will always know whether you do or do not have ink in there um, some people may not like that but when you uncap it it goes right to the threads um, some people prefer that it's hidden I personally prefer that it is hidden um, if you checked out the review I've done of you wow I just threw that memento zero uh, no memento moment oh my goodness Leonardo memento magico that was the way that their design used to be. It used to be um, outside the cap. Now it is tucked in. Um, I personally prefer having it tucked in, um, but I'm definitely not mad about it. And since I have it here, here's a size comparison anyways. Uh, they're pretty darn similar uh, size-wise. Um, so I happen to prefer it tucked in, um, but I'm not like super mad about it that it's tucked out. The only reason why that I would want it in uh, is just because that way you see more of the resin. Um, but I get the appeal of having it outside um, so that you always know without even having to take the cap off what your ink is. You get another rose gold trim here before you come to the piston ring or piston knob um, to operate the actual piston mechanism on the inside. Um, and then unscrew to reveal 
the rose gold fine stainless steel narwhal nib. These nibs are made in-house. They are a number six size. They got really nice scroll work on the outside with the narwhal logo in the middle. I really like the look. And then you just have like a regular plastic feed that you see pretty much everywhere on the back. I like that the threads are plastic. Um, they're made of the same resin uh, because you really don't feel them. My thumb does rest on it, but you really don't feel it at all. Um, and it does flare out so that your fingers don't slide past the grip section onto the nib in the feed. Uh, it's a pretty large um, grip size, but my thumb, I just, I always have it pretty far back, uh, but there's really no step up. And the little bit that is there into that grip uh, from the threads to the piston window, is so, so smooth that you really do not feel it whatsoever. It feels really nice in my hand. There's a nice weight without it being too, too heavy. Uh, you can kind of push to post. It doesn't go super deep uh, and it does heavily back weight it for me at that point. Uh, if you've got massive hands, you might want to, but I don't recommend posting this pen uh, because you could act accidentally operate the piston knob and that would be terrible. <laughs> absolutely terrible. I'm going to move the box out of the way, grab some paper here. This is uh, Tomoe River paper from Galen Leather. Um, it's the 52 GSM. We can go to thing here. Yep, those pages were stuck together. Oh, look at that. I even have a little ink. Well, it is what it is. All right. The quick. All right, so <laughs> as you might be able to tell, this is not really a fine nib. They say it's their fine, but it's pretty, it's a beefy fine. I would say this is more what I would consider an actual medium nib. That said, I have used what they label a medium nib, and I would say that that's a broad. So overall, all of their nib sizes run, I would say, a full size larger than what they actually are. Um, the If you reverse right, then you can kind of get to like an extra fine. I would say that's closer to an extra fine than a true fine. Uh, it's actually very nice uh, when, I can't spell that, very nice when you reverse right. And it is insanely nice when you regularly write. Um, it's definitely nice and wet. The ink that I'm using is Monteverde. Come on, focus. Monteverde Super Show Classic Blue. Uh, sample, obviously, from Kool-Aid pens. Um, I've never used this ink before, so I did break my rule in that typically when I use a pen for the first time, I like to use an ink I'm familiar with. Um, but I've used many, many Montegrappa, or Monteverde inks in the past, um, and I've never really been disappointed. Uh, and while I don't love the color, it is very flat and basic. Um, I appreciate like the properties of the ink. Um, nothing special in the sense that there's no shading, no, no shimmer, no, it's not, you know, fast dry. It's not quick dry. It's not, uh, like it doesn't, it doesn't have any special things. It's just, it just works really well. <laughs> um, the, the Basically, it's the same thing as this pen. It just works really well. I've never had any hard starts, never any skips uh, across all the Narwhals I've used, let alone just this one. They're always tuned very nicely, very smooth. Like I said, they do run pretty much a full size bigger. Um, so if you like a typical medium, then maybe get a fine uh, and so on and so forth but I've never really had any issues. I mean, you'll notice I had the pen out for a while. I didn't have any jump cuts. I just went right into writing uh, and it handled it no problem. Um, so I'm really impressed. It is a fairly steel or steel, stiff steel nib. You can squeak out maybe a, like, oh gosh, a quarter of an extra nib size 
into it, but there's really not a whole lot. Uh, and like I said, because it runs big anyways, it's really not necessary. Uh, if you had an ink that sometimes shaded, maybe you'd want to press a little hard here and there just to get a little bit more ink pooling, uh, but it's it's not meant for that. It's a pretty stiff nib, uh, and I'm very, very pleased. The overall pen itself uh, runs for about 60 US dollars in retail stores, uh, so it's not bad, and by not bad, I mean I think it's pretty solid for the quality of the pen. The fact that it is piston fill, um, I really like the, from what I can tell as far as the build quality goes, uh, it writes like a flippin' dream, uh, which is awesome because ultimately with any pen, regardless of the price point, that's what you want. <laughs> if it doesn't write, there's no point in it being a pen. Uh, and I don't think anyone will be disappointed, uh, regardless of the model that you go with. Um, like I said, this one obviously is their new one, so this is the one that they're promoting, um, but I have used many and love many. I have sold them only because uh, they all had medium nibs, and like I mentioned up here, it's just too broad for me. Um, I would be very interested to see if they ever have an extra fine, what that would be considered, uh, what that would look like, um, but I'm pretty okay with, with this fine, knowing that it writes more what I would consider a medium. So would I recommend this fountain pen? Uh, the answer is absolutely, um, absolutely I would. Um, I would recommend it 100% of the time for like, you know, just solid performing fountain pens. Let me know if in the comment section below, if you've ever used this pen before uh, or any Narwhal for that matter. Um, if you have, what was your experience with it? Was it as awesome as mine? Was it not? Uh, let me know regardless. <laughs> um, Narwhal, big thank you, thank you, thank you for sending me this pen. Uh, I will treasure it uh, and keep it, definitely. <laughs> uh, if you like this video, hit that like button. If you really liked it but haven't done so already, do hit subscribe. New videos come out every Monday and Friday and the occasional rando on Tuesday. Uh, if you want to help support me and what I do here, uh, please do check out my Patreon link in the description below. Uh, you guys, are amazing over there and I could not continue doing what I do without you. So guys, if you're this far in and you're still watching, you are the reason I make these videos. And as always, I'll see you next time. Bye. Well, all right, all right, all right. Today it is time to say thank you to all of my Patreons. I am so grateful for you. Today is, is July 3rd, so if you do not see or hear your name uh, just be patient. I update it as soon as I can. So for our ultimate human, we've got Daniel Roddy. And then for my VIPs, we have Glenn Kelly, Joan Worthman, Brian Hunter, Aaron C., Luna Wolf Games, Bobby A. Bailey, Bass, Waylay Chang, Brian Law, Lucas Bell, Aubrey Madcourt, Marissa Calvo, Eric Lineman, Jessica Chow, Stephen Baldwin, Carol Lowry, Michael Simon, Sean Sturdy, Catherine Molina, Robert Myers, Bill Pemberton, Karen Epstein, Gretchen Peters, Subi One Kenobi, Bianca Andrews, and Digital Tent Tech. And lastly, but not least, McCall Bennett Lawrence. So thank you, thank you, thank you to everyone, no matter the tier you're in, uh, whether it's bottom or top, does not matter. You all make what I do here possible. Thank you, thank you. Thank you.